nine signs of weak kidneys. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the main signs and symptoms of kidney failure when the kidneys are not working as they should. What are the functions of the kidneys? What are the primary causes of kidney failure? How can you prevent it? Besides the signs and symptoms, I'll also discuss the tests. What are the best tests for diagnosing and monitoring kidney disease? So let's get to today's video. First, I want to highlight that kidney failure, weak kidneys, are on the rise. More and more people are facing this issue and the number of people who are being analyzed is also increasing. So it's important that you pay close attention. Currently, according to recent data, about 20 million people in the United States and over 10 million in Brazil have kidney failure. Just look at how common it is. Now, let's move on to the main causes. The two most common causes are high blood pressure and diabetes. Other common causes are repeated urinary tract infections and autoimmune diseases like lupus, which can also cause what we call nephritis. It can inflame the kidneys. It can also lead to kidney failure. Another known cause is polycystic kidney disease, which can also lead to kidney failure. Recurring kidney stones can also cause kidney failure. Some medications can also damage the kidneys, such as ibuprofen, ketoprofen, diclofenac, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. I am mainly referring to the chronic use, extended usage without medical supervision. Not that if you took ibuprofen once when you were ill, your kidneys will be weak. Is that clear? What is the function of our kidneys? Kidneys have several roles. What are the key ones? They regulate the water level in our body along with certain electrolytes like sodium, potassium, phosphorus, and calcium. The kidneys manage to make these adjustments. If you have weak kidneys, for instance, you will lose the ability to control potassium. Potassium levels can rise in the blood and you may suffer from heart arrhythmias, for example. So they control water and electrolytes, filter toxins. The kidney also has another interesting role, which is the production of erythropoietin to stimulate the production of red cells. The kidneys also play a key role in activating vitamin D. So besides managing calcium, they have a part in vitamin D, which is essential for calcium metabolism. So the kidneys have a variety of functions. What are the signs and symptoms of weak kidneys? When they are not functioning properly, now that you know their functions, I'll also talk about the tests and when you'll experience these symptoms. Don't forget to watch until the end to learn about this. Let's start with the descending question. Sign number nine is swelling. We've observed that the kidneys regulate water, the body's fluids. If the kidneys are weak, one of the symptoms could be swelling. I'm going to highlight swelling in the lower limbs, the legs. Not just at the end of the day, but you might have swollen legs due to weak kidneys. This swelling can also occur in other places like the face, upper limbs, arms, lungs, it's called water in the lungs or pulmonary edema. That can also happen, but I'm going to highlight here for the legs. It's because of gravity. Usually it's the first place you'll notice this swelling. Number eight, change in urination, change in pee. Some people start waking up to urinate, pee a lot during the day, and some other people stop peeing. You may have heard this. Oh, he had cold kidneys and stopped going to the bathroom. He didn't pee anymore. He started to get swollen. But here I'm going to draw attention to both sides. Some people have increased urinary frequency, an increased need to pee, and other people have a reduction. So I'm going to add here changes in pattern and frequency of urination. Number seven, tiredness, that fatigue, you wake up already tired. Why? It could be due to a buildup of toxins. This can change your mood and also because of kidney disease. You saw it in the functions. Besides filtering toxins, it stimulates the production of red blood cells, erythropoietin. If you don't have this stimulus, kidney disease can lead to anemia and also give you that tiredness, lack of energy, weakness. Sign number six, altered taste of food. Some people report a metallic taste. It feels like they're eating iron. This can happen not only because of the buildup of toxins in our body, but also because of the increase in urea. Sign number five, nausea, vomiting, change in appetite. Some people may lose weight. Why nausea, vomiting? 
sometimes even difficulty thinking due to the buildup of toxins, you saw that one of the main functions of kidneys is precisely to do this filtration to get rid of toxic substances for our body. Sign number four, high blood pressure. One of the signs of weak kidneys is an increased pressure as one of the kidneys' roles is to control the volume of fluids in our body. If this becomes unbalanced, it can lead to high blood pressure, but you also understood from this video that one of the causes of kidney disease is high blood pressure, but now you also know that it can be a consequence, a symptom. What's the take-home lesson from this information? That whenever you get diagnosed with high blood pressure, you also need to check your kidney function because it could be a result, and vice versa if you're diagnosed with kidney disease, you need to monitor your blood pressure. I always recommend maintaining control over your blood pressure by taking at least one measurement a week outside of a hospital environment, outside of a clinic, beyond the doctor's appointment, because some people have what we call white coat hypertension. Many people laugh, thinking I'm joking, but it's real. Some folks have normal blood pressure, yet when they see the doctor, it's high. Sometimes a person is normal, chatting and laughing, yet their pressure is high. So it's vital to check outside the hospital. Always jot down the result, the heartbeat, shown on the monitor, the date and time, so the doctor can average the results. How often do you do it? When was your last blood pressure check? Put it in the comments. It's important. If you apply this info to your life, I'll be happy. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd ask you to give it a like. Hit the like button. That way the system understands the video is relevant and can spread this information. Our goal is a thousand likes, a goal we can easily meet, so I'm counting on your help. And sign number two is shortness of breath, which can happen for two reasons. The first one is anemia. Red blood cells can oxygenate our tissues, our organs adequately because of the anemia. But it can also happen. This sign is a bit more advanced because of the accumulation of fluids, which can have a series of consequences in our body. One of these consequences is shortness of breath. And the number one sign is dry and itchy skin from the accumulation of toxins also can be a sign of weak kidneys. And what is a normal exam? What are the exams you should do routinely? And also, what are the measures to avoid kidney disease? Let's start with the tests, and I want to highlight two. The first key test for early diagnosis and assessment of kidney health is creatinine. Through creatinine, we can estimate how much percent the kidneys are functioning, which is an excellent test used for several years and is crucial for early diagnosis of kidney disease. But what is a normal creatinine value? Generally, the reference value is up to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. In some cases, for example, a man who does physical activities with increased muscle mass goes to the gym, for example. This value can be changed up to 1.4. So there are some peculiarities, but generally up to 1.2 would be a normal creatinine value. In some cases, it can be a little lower, 1.1. So there is not a fixed value for everyone. It depends a lot also on the reference and the method that this test was done. But I want to highlight these values here. Another test that's very important for evaluating kidney health is the partial urine, simple urine, or EQW test. In some parts of the world, this test is referred to as simple urine or urine one, for example. But it's the test where you give a little bit of urine in a small bottle and leave it in the lab. This test can diagnose some changes before you notice them, like blood in the urine. With this test, we can see if there are traces of blood before it becomes visible, before the urine turns dark, for example. That's why I didn't include it in the signs and symptoms, because when it gets to this level, the disease may be more advanced, and through the urine test, we can detect early that your kidneys are losing blood. Another very interesting piece of information is the presence of proteins in the urine because it could indicate that your kidneys are injured. What is one of the signs of protein in urine? Your urine can get quite foamy. In this test, we can detect a smaller amount of protein before you show symptoms. 
this could also indicate a more advanced disease. Through this simple, easy, and cheap urine test, we get all this information, plus a variety of additional data that it provides us. But these two are crucial, the detection of blood and protein in the urine. And now what are you going to do to avoid having a kidney disease? I'm going to put some measurements in this video. First, don't eat too much salt. You need to keep track of how much salt and sodium you're consuming. According to the World Health Organization, a good level of salt consumption is up to 5 grams of salt or 2 grams of sodium. You can manage this and get more information by analyzing food labels and checking the composition of the food you eat. So you need to do this because it's beneficial for your kidney health as too much salt and sodium can lead to several diseases such as high blood pressure. Of course it's not just that but it's one of the steps you should take for the health of your kidneys. Another very interesting step is to avoid consuming added sugar or simple carbohydrates. Why? We already know that when you consume sugar, like when you put sugar in your coffee, for example, when insulin levels rise in our body, the kidneys also get stimulated to retain more water. Insulin also plays a role in kidney function. Were you aware of this? This wasn't discussed much until recently, but new studies already demonstrate this effect of insulin. So avoid simple sugars. Besides helping you better control your blood sugar, you won't have this effect of increasing water retention. Steer clear of consuming ultra-processed foods. This not only benefits your kidneys, but also your overall health. And since kidneys aid us in this filtration process, it's really beneficial to avoid ultra-processed foods. But what exactly are ultra-processed foods? For instance, shop-bought frozen pizza, box burgers, those sort of foods, biscuits, filled biscuits, those packaged foods you buy. So, try to eat more natural foods and less packaged ones, minimizing the foods you take out of packages. This is a really good tip. You should follow this. For the health of your kidneys and your overall health, avoid eating processed meats like copa, salami, and parma ham. Tip number four, exercise. It's essential that you do at least 150 minutes a week split into three or more sessions, 30 minutes, five times a week, for example, for cardiovascular health and kidney health. At least if you can do more, that's even better. An interesting goal would be 250 minutes per week, also split into three or more days. A more audacious goal, harder to achieve, but it's very good for your health. Tip number five is weight control. We know that obesity, is linked to high blood pressure, to the increased frequency of diabetes, two of the main causes of kidney disease. So it's very important that you manage your weight. And tip number six is hydration, which is also very important for kidney health. What would be adequate hydration? On average, 30 milliliters per kilogram of weight. So someone who weighs 100 kilograms will have to drink an average of three liters spread out throughout the day, okay? So hydration is also important for kidney health. From zero to 10, what rating do you give this video? If it's a 10, I'll make more videos like it. Also put in the comments where you're from, what city you're watching this video from. Write the city you were born in, where you're from, and your current location, which I always like to read. I talk about Porto Alegre, and I was born in Porto Alegre too. You didn't have that information before, but now you know where I'm from. I'm going to suggest another video you can watch. It's a video where I discuss the liver. Do you know what the worst habits are for your liver? How can you unknowingly damage your liver? I explain all of that in this video here. I'm sure you'll like it. Stay tuned. See you next time.